Hello everyone, it's me again, uh, doing another little drive along chat with you once again, hands free and uh, focusing on the road. But I just thought I'd have a little discussion with you as we go along here, because it's a good time to sort of have a little quiet chat. So again, uh, some questions that get asked me over and over again, and I try my best to answer, um, always come on my live streams in the comments section. And uh, one of the questions that gets asked me a lot is, hey Matt, what do I do when my family is resistant to me joining the army or the military of any kind? Uh, you know, my family and my friends, they don't want me to join, they're against it. Um, I'm disrespecting my family doing it. I don't know if I should. Is this a good idea, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is kind of a really tough question to answer. And it's one that you as a personal basis need to look at yourself and say, is this something I really want to do? When your friends and your family are telling you not to do something, nine times out of 10, it's within your best interest. They're looking out for your safety, they're looking out for your future, your well-being, your, your personal wellness, whatever it may be, they're looking out for you. That's how family and friends should work, right? Now, the military is one of those jobs that I think a lot of people, if they don't know much about it, are very much ill-informed, they don't have enough information to go on to make a justified assessment as to whether or not someone should be a part of that career or that lifestyle, because it's not just a job, right? It is it is a lifestyle. Um, and a lot of people, because they don't have that information, make assumptions to say that someone that they know or love shouldn't be a part of it. And it's not it's not true, it's not 100% accurate, and it's just a misconception that's made between everyone that knows very little about the military. The first thing you've got to do when your family is calling out for as to why you wanting to join, I don't want you to join, is you need to ask them what is their true reasoning as to why they don't want you to join. Is it because they're scared for your safety, because you may have to deploy? Uh, is it because you won't be as successful than if you went to school and things like that? Once you get an answer from them as to what that is, that's where I can start going and giving you a little bit more information here. So let's start off with the first one. I don't think you should join the army or the military because you're gonna be in danger and you could be killed. This is a really interesting misconception and it's uh, something that I think you need to have the discussion with them and inform them. You need to do your research first before you have any of these discussions. May I just add, you don't go into this blind, you know, speaking to your loved ones. These are the most cherished people in your life. You don't go into it blind without the facts, the figures, and the information before you have this conversation. And it's a serious conversation. It's not one you have, you know, in passing or, you know, as you're getting ready for school in the morning or whatever. It's a serious sit-down talk that everybody is calm, comfortable, not stressed, you know, no alcohol involved. Have a serious conversation and say, you know, this is what I want to do. So joining the army is going to get you killed. Joining the military is going to get you killed. I don't want you to get hurt. Look, you can get killed in... A thousand professions that are equally if not more as dangerous than it is in the military firefighters police construction uh, medical fields there is hundreds and thousands of careers and jobs that are just as dangerous and as risky as the military is that's a fact it's just a genuine fact the interesting part is I have a friend who works on live wire he works on the electronic uh, the electric pylons, you know, the high voltage electric pylons, one of the most dangerous jobs in the world. And his parents never had one concern about it, never had one problem with him scaling up a 75 foot tower pylon and connecting up himself to 200,000 volts of electricity and, and changing transformers and blah, blah, blah. Never had one concern. But when he mentioned to me that he told his parents he was joining the army or wanted to join the army, they were dumbfounded they were flabbergasted i love that word flabbergasted because he was going to join it because of the risk to his life and how he could be killed are you kidding me like come on like this is insane now i'm not saying that there is no risk in joining the armed forces of course there is you're a combat force you're there to protect and serve and defend your nation or your country whatever it may be and there is inherent risk but i think what you need to go to counsel or, or you know have the serious discussion with your friends and family on this particular topic is look yes it is risky yes it is dangerous but i am doing something that is going to be worthwhile to the cause that i'm going to you know i'm doing it to help others i'm doing it to protect national interests and yes there is risk there's always going to be risk in any job i could be killed within an instant within my job just from someone making a mistake but 
the military is always showcased more in the hazardous world because it's on movies, it's in the TV, it's always on the news. And of course the political spectrum involves in that, which I'm not going to speak to. And people just start panicking. You know, friends and family start panicking. You think, oh, my son, my daughter is going to get sent to war and they're going to be killed. You know, and it's a horrible thing to know to have to go to war. And that's a reality that you would have to accept that if you were to join the armed forces, you know, that is something that you would potentially have to do. Um, but you need to explain to them that it's not all about that. You know, humanitarian aid, peacekeeping, uh, home help, you know, with, with uh, disaster relief at home, firefighting, flood relief. We see Australia burning to the ground right now. And big shout out to Australia right now. Horrible to see um, things like this happening in your country and the, the people losing their lives and their homes and their livelihoods. But that's what I mean. Like, you're not just joining the army to go into war. That's not what it's about. Although that is one of the prime directives of the military, that's not what it's all about. And you need to have that conversation and, and reinforce the fact that it's, it is a dangerous career, but it's not something that you should focus on. It's not the key point that your family should be hooked in on. The next point that your family or friends may throw at you is that joining the armed forces is going to diminish your educational reputation and you're not going to be able to get as many qualifications and you're not going to be as, as uh, viable to go into the civilian workforce once you quit. It is the most ridiculous, the most ridiculous statement that anyone can make to you if you have um, the interest in joining the military. The reason for that is there is so many opportunities for you to get a higher education, better education than you would in civilian life. And that's a fact. You can go through civilian life, get your education and come out with nothing because you've just gone to school. But the military, they will pay for you to do your education. They will pay for you, depending on the country or the armed forces that you're a part of, they will pay or subsidize at least portional parts of your education for free in terms of doing service on the other end. Not only will you come out with an education that was the exact same choice that you were going to make in civilian life, but you'll come out with life experiences, teamwork, core skills, friendships, uh, doors will open to for you left, right, and center. I do not have a degree. I would like to get one and I will get one in the future, but I don't have one. Nothing has stopped me from getting one, whether I was in the military or in civilian life. And I'm still feeling that I am quite successful in my life to say that I haven't required education. Now that's a whole new story, a whole new topic. But if your friends and family are telling you that joining the army is going to make you less appealing to the civilian workforce, you're not going to be able to get qualifications. It is literally the opposite end of the spectrum. And once again, if you're going to have the discussion to try and bring them around your thinking and your ideology of you wanting to join, you need to get back with them with some facts and some figures and some information to tell them, actually, mom, dad, brother, sister, husband, wife, brother, whatever it may be. No, that's not the case. I will get qualifications. I will be, if not more appealing than what the civilian workforce would be with the qualifications that I can acquire with the military and have it subsidized in terms of cost. Instead of getting a $40,000 loan out and then having to pay it off for the next however many years, half of it, a portion of it, or maybe even all of it will be paid by the military for some service on the other end and I get something out of it too. It's a win-win. So don't ever listen to that point. I think it's the most ridiculous. You know, the going to war thing, I can kind of sympathize with, with friends and family that don't want to see you get hurt. But the educational side of things, and you know, you're not gonna be as appealing to the workforce, is so far from the truth, it's, it's not even funny. Um, another big reason as to why people don't want you to join the military is they think that you are going to be never home. You're never gonna see your friends, you're never gonna see your family. You're always going to be away from home. And this is another really tough one because it all depends on the forces that you're joining, the military branch you're joining, the trade that you're in, the country that you're in, the, you know, the theoretical um, operational environment that you're exposed to at any one time with your military. It's very, very subjective. So I'm going to be really careful here. You have to remember that when you join the military, it is a lifestyle. It is not a job. You don't join the army, you don't join the air force, you don't join the marines, you don't join the navy. You go make some money and be like, cool, this is just a job that I do nine to five, go home on weekends whenever I possibly can. It is a complete lifestyle change, which means that you have to adapt your entire life to it. Unfortunately, the army or the military does not wrap itself around your lifestyle. 
you must wrap your life around the military lifestyle, which means you adjust your timings, you change on which uh, your, your, your living habits, your accommodation, your location, your friends, your family will change from where you can see them or not. It's difficult, it's not easy, I'll tell you that. It's hard, it's hard work when you miss your family, your friends. I joined the army at 16, and I must admit, um, the detachment from my family is difficult, but I've accepted it. It's just part and parcel now in my life that I am in on the other side of the world doing my own thing, and that's what you will have to do. But it does not mean that you will not see them enough. There is plenty of opportunity for you to be able to travel. The military sometimes will subsidize your travel, give you discounts, you'll get discounts with airlines. For instance, with WestJet and Air Canada, your baggage is paid for with the military, things like that, that, that are benefits to help you go see friends and family. It's costly to fly, okay? It's costly to fly. Most of your deployments, operational training, things like that, you know, your postings and your bases that you're at, will be away from your home base, and that is okay. It's okay because it's a learning experience for you and your family to realize that you don't need to be there every minute of the day, every weekday, coming to visit, you know, having Sunday supper with your parents. It doesn't have to be that way. You need to start learning how to leave the nest and your family need to learn how to let you leave the nest. And your loved ones, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your brothers, sisters, whoever it may be, they all need to accept that you've chosen something that is to better yourself, better your life, and that it's not a big deal if you're not home all the time. And I think that's something you need to reinforce to your friends and family. It's a tough one. It's a really hard conversation to have. It's not easy for yourself to going through that transition of, you know, going into a lifestyle where you don't get to see your friends and family all the time. But trust me, it's worth it. You're going to get a lot out of it. And don't be, don't be upset or stressed about it. Another big reason why people tell you not to join the military or not to join the army is... Oh, you're not going to get enough money. You're not going to get paid much. You're going to be living off like craft dinner and spaghetti noodles for the last for the next like you know ten years of your career. You're going to be miserable. Blah blah blah. It's a complete rhetoric. It's not true. Um, look, it all depends. And again, this is apples to oranges. It all depends on what force you're joining, what trade, what branch. But the military look after their own. It is not a job you choose <coughs> to get paid hundreds of thousands of dollars every year. You get paid in other ways that subsidize the fact that maybe your pay is not high-end, okay? You're not getting six-figure paychecks. You're not getting high-end dollar value paychecks. And that is okay to me. I never once, once cared about my pay in the army. I never cared for it. I was given military accommodation. I had good friends. I traveled when I needed to. Um, I had fun. I partied. You know, I, I enjoyed my youth in the military. When I grew up, I started to realize, you know, now I need to start saving. And then you start getting promoted and you can subsidize the, that saving up for things like a house by, you know, your promotions and your, your increase in trade um, skills. You'll get additional value to your paycheck from that. It's really tough because I'm speaking to a very broad spectrum of audience here. Um, some of you are probably saying, yeah, well, our military belly pays us. And someone else say, oh, we got the best paid military in the world. Look, guys. Pay is, pay is definitely an important part of your life. You know, it keeps you alive, your food, you know, your accommodation, things like that. But if you're joining the military and thinking only about pay, you're doing it all wrong. And if your friends and family are thinking that too, they're doing it wrong. If they're thinking that you're going into the military and you're not being paid enough, it's going to be the detrimental factor as to why you wouldn't join. They need to realize, and you need to also research and realize when you have this conversation, that there is a ton of other opportunities that subsidize and reinforce the fact that it doesn't matter. You're gonna to get tons of training, tons of life experience that is all free. Adventurous training, free. Weeks away on vacation, for free. You're getting salaried pay. It's not, you have to clock in, clock out. You're getting medical coverage. You're getting dental coverage. You're getting full health expenses. All these things are done for you at the expense of the military. They're there to help you. And yes, you know, you may not get a lot of money, but you're gonna get so much more out of it and you need to really sell that to your friends and family. Say, yeah, well, okay, I may not have a lot of money, but I get to travel. I get to experience things that no one else in the world is ever gonna experience. And to, to me, that's that's appealing. That's gonna you know compensate for me not having to have that huge paycheck. Remember though, that it's not always gonna be the case. When you start your career, just like any job, your pay scale will be fairly low. Then you'll get promoted. Then you'll do specialist courses. Then you open up the doors for things like commission, um, high-end promotions. It all depends on your own situation, your own military. 
but your pay will increase. It will get better. And actually, sometimes during your career, it will be very appealing, especially when you go on operational deployments, specialized training uh, exercises, subsidiary allowances. All this money is going into your pocket direct, and it's good cash. You know, when you go on operational deployment, you're getting good money, good money. Because A, you've got nothing to spend it on. B, you're getting dangerous allowance. You're getting subsidized, you know, uh, hazardous working conditions allowance. All these subsidiaries that you're getting that you may not even realize. And then you come off these deployments, you're like, holy cow, I got a lot of money here. Like, what can I do with this? I can invest it. I can save it. I can put it into a tax return, wherever it may be, right? Don't please think that money is, you know, the thing that's going to prevent you from from being able to, uh, being able to uh, you know, join the military. So there's just some of the key points that I thought I'd mention today. Um, I really appreciate you all stopping by on today's video. If you did enjoy it, please leave me a like by hitting the thumb button. If you want to be notified of any upcoming videos, hit the little bell by the subscribe button. I'd love to hear any other topics you'd like me to talk about in these kind of chats where we have a bit of a sort of background chat um, because they're fun. They're enjoyable to just kind of sit down and talk to you guys. Uh, if you want to have a specific conversation with me in person, you're more than welcome to come hang out on my Discord channel. All my social media links are in the description box below. Please go check them out. Thank you to everyone who's been donating towards my Patreon. Um, really can't thank you enough. It really, really means so, so much to me, uh, your donations towards that site. And I will catch you all on the next one, everyone. Have a wonderful day. All the best. Bye-bye.